the Lord for his mercies extended to us, for indeed he is good. And so we honor him to our officers, brothers and sisters. Please accept greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. Those online with us tonight in our Bible study sessions, good to have you joining with us in the name of the Lord. We're going to be going to Acts chapter 1 tonight, so take out your Bibles, take out your pens and your paper, or your book, I should say, just in case you need to make notes and jot your questions. We'll take the questions at the end in the name of the Lord. Acts chapter number 1, and we're going to go from verse number 1 through to 8, and I ask of us to read responsibly. So I'll commence and you will alternate with me. So one through eight. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, which he was taken up. After that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Being assembled together, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. They therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power together, but he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and he shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. In our final week of our consecration for this season, the month of January in particular, our focus for this week has been receive he the Holy Ghost, receive he the Holy Ghost, and we continue to fast, we continue to pray in anticipation of persons receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. And if we have already received the gift, we need to be operating under the influence and the power of the Holy Ghost. The Lord gave us the Holy Spirit for a reason, and it's important for us to fulfill the purpose for which he gave us this wonderful, powerful gift. The most outstanding miracle, with the exception of Jesus, of God Almighty becoming flesh, following on the heels of that, is when we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So it was a miracle for God to become man. It's unheard of, but he did it all by himself. And he did it for a purpose. And it's important for us to appreciate that. All right? So, as we said, our focus for this week is receive ye the Holy Ghost. We read from Acts chapter 1. And let me just elaborate on a couple of the verses as we go through and then dive right into the lesson. So, here is Luke the writer of the gospel according to Luke, continuing another book. He is writing under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And he makes reference to the former book that he wrote, which is the book of Luke, the gospel according to Luke. So he says, the former treatise have I made, O Theophilus. He's addressing the book to Theophilus. Possibly a notable friend, somebody who in high rank and regard it's also the book of Luke in chapter 1 and verse 3 identified him as 
most excellent, Theophilus. It seems good to me also, Luke 1, 3, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto you, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. If you break up the word or the name Theophilus, you get two words, which is Theo speaks to God and Philos speaks to friend. And so you could say that the book is written to those who are the friend of God. And that should be all of us because he calls us friend even while we were sinners, while we were ungodly, undone, and had no desire for him. He still extended his love to reach us. So I've written it, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. I'm in, I told you about what he did while he was here in the earth, but he's not finished yet. He continues to do the work, but he does it through his spirit. It says it in verse number two. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Remember, he said to the disciples, go into all the world. That's a commandment. Go and baptize them. Go and teach them. Go and cause them to observe. Go and make disciples of all men, is what he said. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion. After his suffering, he got up back from the dead and he showed himself many infallible proofs, undeniably being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them, command them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the what? Wait for the promise. So go to Jerusalem is the instruction to the disciples. Go to a particular location and you're going to wait until. So you can't, <laughs> you can't stop until that which you're waiting for actually happens. It's like the Lord says to Abraham, go to the mount that I'm going to show you. Because that's where the blessing is. So he says now, go to Jerusalem and wait. Wait until, wait until. And you're waiting for the promise. By this, they don't know what Holy Ghost looks like. They have no clue as to the experience they're about to have. They just know that he who we have been walking with for the last three and a half years. We have seen, we have touched, we have handled, and we know that he is the Messiah. We saw when he spoke to the winds and the waves and they obeyed him. We have learned some things about him that would cause us to surrender and to submit our lives unto him. My God and Savior Jesus. Hallelujah. Wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, he have heard of me. I've told you about the families. I told you about the promise. I told you that you are going to get a comforter. I told you that. While I was here in the flesh, I told you I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I will come unto you. He told them that. He's reminding them. This is Jesus before he's about to ascend into heaven. He's talking to this. This is a final discourse as he gets ready to be lifted off the planet and back to earth. And he's sharing. He says, for truly, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days. So yes, John baptized with water, but guess what? You're going to receive the Holy Ghost. And not many days, Jesus have mercy, Lord. When they therefore were come together, they were what? Come together. They asked him saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? So remember now, they're under Roman rule. And the prophecy prophesied that Jesus Christ would come and overtake and set up his kingdom on earth. And so they are looking for a natural, literal, physical kingdom. But the Lord is saying, hey, before I set up that one, I need to set up a spiritual one. Mighty God. So don't worry about that one as yet. Don't be concerned about that. That's, that's not your business. What you need to understand is, is where we are at this present moment. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the time or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own, his own power. But 
he shall receive power. When? After the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. I pray tonight that we'll all receive the gift. Those who have not, you can receive the gift tonight. He that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. Somebody just believe God tonight. Believe God tonight. When God says it shall come to pass, it must come to pass. Nothing can stop it. So we could ask ourselves a couple of questions as we ponder our lesson tonight. Is the Holy Ghost essential to salvation? How does one receive the Holy Ghost? And what is, that should be, is the evidence of receiving the Holy Ghost? All right, we're going to answer these questions from a scriptural perspective because the Bible actually speaks. Now, the question is asked, what must we do? What must we do? Now, we need to understand something. There's nothing we can do as it relates to our soul salvation. All right? We are not the ones to plan out our salvation and work it out. God has already done all of that. We can only receive same. What must we do? All right? So it's not a works, the writer says to us. It is Paul in his letter to the Ephesian church. He says, for by grace are ye saved through, and that not of yourselves. It is the not of, lest any man should. So we can't work to earn salvation because this is not a salary. It's a gift. And it's a gift from the Lord. And so I need to believe God. I need to not work or try to engage in activities to merit it. I remember doing a Bible study with a gentleman. Um, and he desired the gift of the Holy Ghost. I, I, I reached out to his friend, I think last week it was, to ask him, asked whether or not he had gotten the Holy Ghost by now. And he said, yes, he's gotten the Holy Ghost. And I was so glad to hear that. Because we had done Bible studies with him. And initially, he didn't receive immediately. He actually went into fasting and he prayed. And I realized that after a little while, I wasn't seeing any church any at all. So I reached out to him and said, hey, don't see a long time. What's happening? He said, boy, I'm vexed. Because he in fast and in prayer. And God is supposed to fill him with the Holy Ghost. And God didn't fill him. So I'm vexed with God. I'm done with him. So I said, you think that so you can earn Holy Ghost? Because you fast. How many days you, have, you pay for it? I said, yeah. I said, no, go so. <laughs> this is a gift. That comes from God. You can't work for it. You can't earn it. There's nothing we can do to merit it. It's, an, it's a gift. However, faith is faith. We said, we said oh, by grace we are saved through faith. But guess what? Faith, if it hath not works, is dead. So when I say I have faith, to access God's grace. I've got to respond. I've got to do something. But the doing of whatever it is that I'm doing is not what earns me salvation. Let's look at an example. The Bible said of Noah that Noah moved by faith, being warned by God. That the earth is above. So by faith, Noah moved to build an ark to the saving of his family. He's responding to what God has said. He's, he's not working to be saved. So yes, in building the ark, well, he's not working to be saved. He is responding to what God says. God says, build an ark. Another example take a sacrifice, a lamb, and bring him an offering. It's not the lamb that brings salvation now. 
It is my obedience to what he requires because faith is obedience. So when I say I obey him, I'm demonstrating my faith in him, responding to what he requires of me. So the question is, what is required today to be saved? I must repent. That's not work. That's a response to the instructions given. I must be baptized. That's not work. That's a response to the instruction given. That's being obedient. So I can look and say, boy, well, I went and I got baptized, you know, and I went and I did all of this. So God now should do this for me because I did this for him. It doesn't work like that. I'm responding to what he requires whenever, however, he requires. So if he says, bring a lamb, you bring the lamb. If he says, go show yourself to the priest. And you just obey. And on your way, you're cleansed of leprosy. It is their obedience. Dip seven times Naaman into the pool, into the river Jordan. If you dip one time, you think it's working, working? No, he's responding to the instructions to dip. And when he reads six times, he don't finish the instructions yet. Because he needs to dip how many times? So by faith, by grace are you saved through faith. So I'm going to have faith. So faith is not passive. Faith is active. Faith must respond in order to lay hold on that which is eternal. To access God's grace, I've got to demonstrate. To access God's grace, I've got to demonstrate. That's right. And without works, faith is dead. Very good. All right. So here, the question comes back to us. Peter, on the day of Pentecost, while he preached Jesus Christ, the first day the apostolic message was preached, something miraculous happened. Read for me, please, on the board. Acts 2, 37 through 38. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? That's the question. What shall we do? Yes, I hear you telling me that we have crucified innocent blood. The same one that came to save us. Peter is under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And he's bringing conviction through the Holy Ghost to the hearts of those who are listening as he preached Jesus Christ. And their hearts, their hearts were pricked. Their hearts became convicted of sin. They killed Jesus a couple days ago, 50 days ago, and they felt nothing. But under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, the message that being preached brought conviction to their hearts. And they say, what shall we do? And Peter answered and said, what? Repent and what? And be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the remission of sins and he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the instruction as to what must we do. We're talking about tonight, receive ye the Holy Ghost. What should we do to receive the Holy Ghost? Very good. Number one, believe. Somebody say believe. believe. Everybody say believe. believe. That's the first thing. I must believe. If I don't believe, I won't repent. Because I need to believe that I am a sinner. <laughs> and I have committed sins that are in opposition to God. And because I have done that, I am guilty. And there's none righteous, no, not one. And without Jesus Christ, I'm on my way to hell and I need help. I need to be saved. So I've got to first believe. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to him must first believe that he is. That means he exists. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him hebrews 11 and verse 6 tells us that but where does faith come from hearing romans 10 17 faith cometh by hearing hearing what hearing the word so when i hear the word faith is inspired faith is birth in my spirit the means of exchange that i need to connect to the powers that controls the universe it happens when I get word. The woman heard about Jesus. 
And she decided to press and touch the hem of his garment. The blind man heard about Jesus and he believed that if I just call him, I, my sight can be restored. They heard the men with the leprosy heard about Jesus and they called him and he responded and they were cleansed. They got faith when they got the word. So I need word in order for faith to be inspired in me. I'm going to believe God. And once I've got faith, I must demonstrate that faith by works. Otherwise, how can I say I have faith if I have not works? Because I can show you my faith by my works. And so Peter, sorry, Paul it is in his answer to the Philippian jailer in Acts chapter 16 and brought them out. This is after they sang and there was an earthquake and the prison doors were open. That same night, the man in charge of the prison, the Bible says they brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? When the man saw the power of God and the prisoners, by the way, this man was about to take his life. Because if you're in charge of the prison house and the prisoner has escaped, what are you going to tell your boss? But then they say, hey, we're still here in the darkness. We're still here. We haven't gone anywhere. And he came under conviction because the man of God was in prison and he preached a message to him. And the Bible says, he said, he brought them out and said, sir, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe, believe. That's the first thing you know. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. If you believe, you shall be saved. Believe what? Believe on the Lord Jesus. What must I believe about him? What do I believe concerning him? I believe that he is my savior in order for me to be saved i must believe that i am a sinner because he's going to save me from my brothers and sisters outside of christ we're under the dominion of satan and we are warranted the penalty for sin but when jesus christ comes and save us the dominion of satan is broken over our lives no longer does the devil have dominion once we have become water baptized filled with the holy ghost the bible says in ephesians chapter 2 that we were we were under the in spirit, we were under the control of the devil. We were children of wrath, children of disobedience, subject to the wrath of God. That's how we were born. Without Jesus Christ, we're on our way to a Christless eternity, controlled by the enemy. When we receive so great salvation, no longer does Satan have dominion over me. No longer am I a slave to sin, nor to Satan. I was a slave before but when i came to know jesus i became a slave for jesus because true freedom can only be expressed in being a slave for jesus christ other slavery don't cut it as when the devil have us as under under his control it is horrible we're seeing it happening in our world today we're seeing young men young women committing the atrocities around our world. It is horrendous. But when we become a slave for Jesus Christ, that's true freedom. It's the only freedom. There is no other freedom. There is absolutely no other freedom but to be a slave for Jesus Christ. And so we must believe on him, that he's our savior and he's our God. And then we respond by faith to him in order to be saved. John 7, 39 through, sorry, 37 through 39. Could you read for me, please? In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Mighty God. He that believeth on me, Jesus said, as the scripture hath said. The scripture reveal who I am. 
And if you accept the word and believe the word, you shall receive the Holy Ghost. It says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And just in case we would have ever gotten to the place where we wandered and bring all kind of description as to what the water in the living belly is. <laughs> the living water out of the belly is. He clarified it for us. He says, but this spake he of the spirit, mm -hmm, which they that believe on him shook. Because if I believe, I shall. When I believe, I shall. Paul, on his missionary journey, asked the question when he met upon the disciples of John. He says, have you received the Holy Ghost since you? Because these signs shall follow them that in my name they shall. Hold on, hold on, hold on. These signs shall follow them that if i'm a believer hold on is that some believer these signs shall follow them that believe if i'm a believer what kind of sign going to follow me these signs shall follow me we shall speak with all believers must speak with new tongues because these they shall lay hands on thee and they shall who said that they shall cast out all believers, not some, all. If you drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm you. That don't mean you go look for deadly thing and drink it. You know? That's not what that means. <laughs> if somebody try a thing to poison you, God will protect you. But you don't go look for poison, go drink it and say, let me see if this works. That is stupid. <laughs> no, hold on. <laughs> Write it down, Sister Prince. This spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet. But the Holy Ghost have always been here. Check the previous lesson. I see the, what we did in the last lesson. The Holy Ghost has always been here, but have never been given like this where he comes to tabernacle within our very being and make our bodies the temple of the living God. Yes, in the Old Testament, he moved upon Samson. Yes, he spoke to Moses. Yes, he did all of that. But guess what? He says, in the last day, said the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon, somebody say all. Yellow, black and white, tall, short. It doesn't matter. Children, adults, in between, all flesh. My God. It used to be priests and kings. Now today, everybody can get Holy Ghost. Jesus of mercy, God. Somebody give God praise, no man. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody need to rest your hand on your chest and say, that includes me. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So number one, I must believe. Number two, I must repent. Somebody say repent. That's right. He shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. How? I must first believe. Number two, I must repent. Very, very important. Very, very important. Repentance is, the genuinely, is, is to genuinely change one's attitude towards sin and want righteousness to reign in one's heart. It is the publican who came to the temple and he says, standing afar off, he says, and he would not even lift up so much as his eyes to heaven, but smote upon his breast and said, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. And the Bible says that man left justified. While the Pharisee who was in the same temple at the front of the church, the sinner came at the back. The Pharisee was at the front and said, God, I'm paraphrasing now. You must be pleased to have a son like me. I give my offering very regular. My and I fast often. You see, all this week, I've been fasting before you. You must be proud of me. And the sinner come in and say, God, I can't even hold up my head. Have mercy upon me, a sinner. And God heard that man. And the one who was praying to him, self, didn't get a response from God because he was not talking to God. He was talking to himself. We must repent. Second Corinthians seven ten. What does it say? For godly sorrow works repentance to 
salvation. Not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world works there. Godly sorrow. That means God is the author of the sorrow. It's not me now thinking and feel sorrowful. No, God start the sorrow inside of me. And that sorrow brings conviction because I now recognize what I have done. God is the author of this sorrow. This sorrow leads to, and that's why I won't have any regrets. Because I'm going to gain from the sorrow that I got from God. But we can sorrow and when we finish, we lose all kinds of things. <laughs> and the sorrow of this world exactly works death. But when God stirs sorrow within, and he can. And that's why, you know, brothers and sisters, we've got to trust God in everything. Because whatever he does is well done. All when I don't understand it, he knows what he is doing. All when seem like, God, you're gone? No, 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 listen. He knows what he is doing. He's in charge. But godly sorrow works repentance. It brings me to a place. And David is such an example. We know the story quite well. David Covetted another man's wife, slept with her, committed adultery, turned around and killed her husband, committed murder. Nine months pass, and David says nothing to the Lord. And God said, Nathan, come here. Nathan was in prayer as I wanted to go to David, and I wanted to tell him this. And David related a story. Sorry, Nathan related a story to David. And when the story hit David's heart, for the first time, David was convicted. He felt sorrow. That started with God, not with him. He didn't start that. God sent a word that authored sorrow within him. When he started to feel the pain and the shame and the guilt, it led him to a place where he now repents. And in Psalm 51, he says, have mercy upon me, O God. And according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out man. That started when God convicted his heart. In other words, I will not repent until my heart has been convicted. And that's what happened to the people on the day of Pentecost. While they listened to Peter preach, the Bible said their hearts were pricked. So if a word don't come... I won't be convicted. Because guess what? We can have sin on the inside and don't even realize it. It takes the word of God to reveal the contents of our hearts. Like David had sin within and said nothing. But when Nathan carried the word of God, it shone because the entrance of God's word brings light and brings illumination. Bam! David sees his sin and is convicted. My response to that conviction is to... Is to repent so when i am convicted i need to respond to that conviction it's not saying lord you know i've been examining my life and i think i've fallen short you know and i want you to forgive me but there's no true remorse there's no conviction and when there's no conviction i will do it again though i have told god that i will never do it but when God has convicted my heart, you get a glimpse of what it looks like from God's perspective. You will never, ever. Because we see it from God's perspective. God hates sin. And we need a glimpse of it to be able to repent of it. Because many times we have it and we hoard it up. Unforgiveness. Gossip, lies. We don't see it as sin. Sin is spelled S-I-N. <laughs> and it comes in all different flavors and colors. <laughs> and size. Some people call it white color. And some call it blue. <laughs> but guess what? The wages for sin is death. And so I must repent when john the baptist came on the scene he says repent you a generation of vipers snakes you are jesus came and did the same thing and so did the apostles repent for the kingdom of god is at hand it's the only way 
to God. I've got to repent. After I've believed him, believing in him caused me to see myself for who I am and see the need to repent of my sins and turn to him. And I'm saying to you, my brothers and my sisters, if we repent, understand that God is the author of godly sorrow. When we respond appropriately to that conviction, God will forgive Ask Nineveh when Jonah went there and he carried the message and their hearts were convicted. They went into fasting and prayer for three days and God heard a wicked and vile city cry unto him and God withheld judgment. Because God is the one who is the author of godly sorrow. He'll bring conviction to the heart and all I need to do is appropriately respond. God tried it with Saul, King Saul. And instead of repenting, he said, is the people there? He made excuse. So yes, my heart can be convicted, but what will my response be? Because I can inappropriately respond to the conviction on my heart as against appropriately responding. And if I appropriately respond, then God will forgive and abundantly pardon and do what he says that he would do. After I have repented, number three, I need to be in the in Jesus' name. I need to be baptized in Jesus' name. Read for me, please. Luke 24, 44 to 47. And these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it was fit for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jesus is talking. Talking to who? His disciples. He spake these words. This shall be fulfilled. All things must be fulfilled, which was written concerning me. The Old Testament wrote about me. I came in the volume of the book. I manifested on a daily basis. Remember when I was in the temple and I turned to Isaiah 61 and I said, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your hearing. Every day that Jesus lived, he was fulfilling the word of God. Purposeful life. Then opened he their understanding. Why? That they might understand the scriptures. And there are people today who have an understanding, but Jesus didn't open their understanding. Jesus had to open the understanding of the disciples for them to understand the scriptures. They saw the scripture in flesh before them and still couldn't understand it. They couldn't understand that, yes, I told you I'm going to die. I'm going to, and they still couldn't perceive what he was saying. He had to open their understanding. Thus it was written, and thus it was fit for Christ to suffer and to write. I told you it would happen. And that repentance, that's water baptism, repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. So Jesus gave the instructions. Watch the disciples as they respond. Peter, on the day of Pentecost, preached. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the remission of sins. And he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He says in Luke chapter 24 that repentance and remission of sins. I need to repent so that my sins can be remitted. Remission follows repentance. So I repent and he forgives. I repent and he removes. Repentance and remission should be preached in his name. And Peter picked it up in response to the instruction given by him. His understanding was now open to the scriptures. He can now speak as an oracle of Almighty God. He's not saying something different from what Jesus said. He's telling, he's saying exactly, because guess what? We read in Acts chapter 1, that which Jesus began to do while he was here in the flesh, he continued to do through the Holy Ghost. Now Peter have the Holy Ghost. 
And Jesus is con so Jesus said to through the Peter, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall, you sh somebody say you shall, somebody say you shall. Somebody need to believe this tonight. Believe tonight. Believe tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts 22, 16. This is the account of Paul. Ananias was. And now why do we tarry? Arise and be baptized and wash. No, this is not Ananias. This is the jailer. Acts 22, 16. Yes. And now why do you tarry? Arise, be baptized, wash away your sins, calling on the name. We're talking about water baptism. Water baptism must be done in the name. The invocation of the name is crucial for the ceremony to be legal. Every ceremony has a ritualistic right. It has a right to it. That makes it legal. Marriage have rights to it. When you come before a marriage officer to perform a ceremony, there are certain legal things that must be done and said for the marriage to be legal. When water baptism is done, it must be done in the name of Jesus to make it legal. It's a legal transaction taking place. He says, do it. Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the it takes the pattern of the tabernacle. When you go through the tabernacle, go through the gate, the first furnishing we meet upon is the brazen altar where we deal with our sin. And then when you move from the brazen altar, we move to the brazen labor where we do what? Wash, which is symbolic of water baptism. So I need to confess my sin first, and then I'm baptized, which is why we must repent first and then baptize. Because repentance is a prerequisite for baptism. If I have not, not, if I have not been repentant, I shouldn't be baptized. If I have not repented of my sins, I'm not qualified for baptism. I need to acknowledge that I'm a sinner condemned to hell and need salvation. Father, forgive me. And then I am baptized. Because repentance, water baptism, identified me with his death. And after he died, what did they do with him? They took him and they buried him. And I am identifying with him in his death by repenting and in his burial in water baptism in his name. Why? Because he died for me and he was buried for me and he didn't stay down there. He rose again for me. Somebody give him glory. Jesus. Hallelujah. Be baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus. And once we, once we believe and repent and be baptized, we shall receive the gift of the he says, but you shall receive power. Somebody said power. When do you get the power? After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now, there are many persons who are going after the power, but don't want the Holy Ghost. And Simon was like that. I want the Holy Ghost because I want, I want to go fight some spiritual warfare. I want the Holy Ghost because I want to do this and I want to do I want the Holy Ghost because I want to speak in tongues. Wrong reason. Why God give Holy Ghost? Is for my soul to be saved because without the spirit of God, I don't belong to God. I need you, Lord. I need you, Jesus, in my soul. And when he comes, he comes with power. Simon says, sell me some of this power. He just said, your heart not right with God. You should have said, I want to receive the Holy Ghost, but you want to buy the power. And many persons come to church because they want to get the power. Because they want to do something to them friend. That's not this power. This power is the power of Jesus Christ. This power causes us to walk right. This power causes us to love our enemies. Jesus. Love them that despitefully use us. Those who say all manner of evil, this power caused me to love them, Jesus. And the Bible says we must love each other to the point where we're willing to lay down our lives like the disciples did. This power enables us to walk a walk of holiness and to live pleasing before God. This power enables us to be obedient. 
cause us to submit to God. The Lord, where you lead me, I will go. What you say do, I will do. And you shall be witnesses. The Holy Ghost is going to make you witnesses of me. Because now you have evidence. That's what makes you a witness. You're going to demonstrate that I'm not dead. I am alive. And people need to know that Jesus is alive. For the promise is unto you and to your children. And to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall the promise, the promise is unto you and to your children. And to all that are, that's us, we who were afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So the Holy Ghost is not just for one, it is for all. Joel prophesied it, it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions and also upon the servant and upon the handmaids in those days will i pour out of my spirit i'm going to pour out into mankind's vessel how they receive the holy ghost let's look at how the disciples and the accounts we have in scriptures, persons receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Luke 24, 49 told us that they tarry. He says, and behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry he in the city of Jerusalem until he be endued with power. So tarry there means to wait. So go and wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Ghost comes. After the Holy Ghost came, he didn't say anybody tarrying anymore because at the time it wasn't time so when the fullness of time came what was happening jesus gave the jewish people some offerings and some ceremonies that they would practice that commemorates the things that god had done in their lives and so he told them about the passover and that reminded them of how the death angel passed over while they were in Egyptian bondage and how God brought them out with a mighty hand. And they would remember that time and they celebrated the Passover. And in that Passover celebration, they would kill a lamb. Now Jesus came and while he was here on the very night that they would kill the lamb and celebrate the Passover, Jesus Christ was killed that very day. He is our Passover lamb and after passover is the feast of unleavened bread and after the feast of unleavened bread which is the day after is going to be the feast of first fruit early sunday morning he up from the grave as the first fruit the first of his kind that rose from the dead wow. hallelujah and 50 days after that is the feast of Pentecost. So he's with them for 40 days on the earth by many infallible proof, proving and showing that guess what? I am here, I sit down and talk to you. But guess what? 50 don't come yet. My God. So go and wait until Jesus. And on the 50th day, which was the feast of Pentecost, as they celebrated the natural feast, here comes the spiritual application. The Holy Ghost came. And guess what? On that day, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, Hallelujah. under the dispensation of the old, you know what would happen? The slaves would be freed. Hallelujah. Your death would be paid off. If you had outstanding debt, it would be canceled. And it happened in the realm of the spirit. I owed a debt I could not pay. Hallelujah. Or then I got the Holy Ghost. Jesus paid it all. Somebody give him glory. Somebody give Jesus glory. I was set free from the dominion of Satan and sin. Hallelujah. He set me free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody who have experienced freedom, give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 They tarried, but not only did they tarry, they worshipped. They did it by worshipping. We read earlier, and, they, and when they 
when they come in, they went up into the upper room where aboard both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas and Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judas the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. We're not talking about just the 11 disciples. We're talking about 120 people in the upper room praising and praying and worshiping. Mary, the mother of Jesus, who carried him in her womb and gave birth to the Messiah, that holy thing, you shall call it the Son of God. She went to the upper room, Lord God of heaven, hallelujah, waiting for the promise of the father and guess what she got it she got the holy ghost just like everybody else she waited anticipated and experienced for herself jesus christ not only physically but also spiritually in her soul why because she too was a sinner and need jesus my god Hallelujah. It's not the immaculate conception. It's the virgin birth. She's not a God. She is a human being like anybody else. And she needs Jesus to be saved. And guess what? He filled her with the Holy Ghost. My God and Savior. What a God. What a God. If we could just get a glimpse and begin to worship him and come in one accord, we could set the atmosphere, a throne room for God's habitation. Hallelujah. Because he inhabits the praises of his people while they worshipped and while they prayed and while they exalted him. Here comes the presence of God because where two or three are gathered. I am there. I am going to be there. He promised it. He promised it. If you gather in my name, hallelujah, hallelujah, I will show up. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mighty God. Can I, I just imagined, you know, they were there and Peter might say, hey, John, remember, you remember when I stepped off the board? Oh, God, and I walked on the water. And he said, yes, I remember when you were sinking, but, but Jesus, Jesus picked me up. Hallelujah. You remember when he went to Lazarus' tomb? Oh, God, he was four days dead. And Jesus called him out. They were worshiping, they were exalting, they were testifying, they were giving him glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And there came a sound from heaven, suddenly, without any warning. My God, hallelujah. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing, 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 mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon them, and they got it. They got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 Mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Can I tell you, unity always pulls God. Unity always pulls God. Unity always pulls God. Ashamanda Bokiri Bosaya. Unity always pull God. I can pull God into I can pull God into my realm. Holy Ghost, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. They were rejoicing, they were celebrating, they were anticipating. They don't know what's going to happen, but they know something good is about to happen. Hallelujah, because I'm in the presence of the King of glory. Hallelujah, I'm in the presence of the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah, and all I need to do is just to worship him create a throne room for him and he will be exalted and he will be lifted up and he will manifest and he will manifest and he will manifest hallelujah hallelujah holy ghost hallelujah 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 jesus hallelujah they were tarrying they were worshiping hallelujah 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 glory be to god ah jesus i love you lord i love you i love you my god not only did they tarry hallelujah not only jesus did they worship but there was laying on of hands 
In Acts chapter 8, Philip went to Samaria under the power of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they had received the word of God, they had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. Yes, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So Samaria, under the preaching of Philip, hallelujah, were being baptized in the name of Jesus, but they had not received any Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So you can be baptized, but don't receive as yet, because many, not many days, it's coming. Hallelujah. Then laid their hands on them, and they receive the Holy Ghost. Simon the sorcerer, Simon the Obiaman saw when Simon Peter laid hands and John and the Holy Ghost was given and he said, sell me some of that. <laughs> Wrong heart. Money can't buy this. This is not for sale. This is the gift of God for the salvation of my soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The very thing, hallelujah, that he was manifesting was the very reason why he needed the Holy Ghost and didn't even realize it because he was deceived the same way he deceived the whole city. He himself was tricked. My God and Savior Jesus, his hands were laid on him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And he begged Peter to pray for him that nothing that Peter said came upon him. But when Peter saw, hallelujah, when, when Simon the sorcerer saw that through the laying of the apostles' hand, the Holy Ghost was given, he said, sell me that. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, he saw something. It couldn't be that he saw nothing. He saw something for him to say, sell me some of this. There are persons who said, they got the Holy Ghost and nothing now happened. No, 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 it don't work like that. It never did. Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hand, the Holy Ghost was given. He said, sell me that. I want that. He wasn't impressed when he saw Philip performing miracles, casting out devils. He said, sell me that. But when he saw through the lane of the apostles' hand, Holy Ghost, he said, sell me that. Because something supernatural happened. Something miraculous happened. Something glorious happened. He saw them speaking, heard them speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Didn't say the explicit, but we know that's what they saw. You know why? Because the same Peter who was there was the same one that was in Cornelius' house and said they got the Holy Ghost just like we did. He was in Samaria. And so he knew that that is what happened to them. Hallelujah. They got the Holy Ghost. We heard them speak. They got the Holy Ghost just the same way that we did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So by the laying of hands, we saw that not only in Samaria, but we also saw that in Paul's missionary journey as he traveled through the coast of Ephesus. And the Bible says, he said unto them, unto what then were he baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. So they were already baptized. Uh -huh. He met some disciples. They were already baptized unto John's baptism. And then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him who should come. Remember, you need to believe on him that should come after, that is on Christ Jesus. Believe on Jesus, my Savior. I'm a sinner. I need help. Believe on him. And when they heard this, they were, they were, they were, and I said, they were baptized in the and baptize them over. Baptize them over in the name of Jesus. Baptize them over in the name of Jesus. Abba Father. Hallelujah. You're watching this. This, 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 this YouTube channel, hallelujah. And you're hearing. But you have not yet been baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus. Paul said that to be baptized over. Paul baptized them over. Why? Because it's necessary for you to put on the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Galatians 3 and verse 27, as many as been baptized have put on Christ. You've been baptized in his name, you put on Jesus by water baptism in his wonderful name. You're identifying with him in his death, and not only in his death, but also in his burial. He was the one that was buried for us. So they baptized him in the name of Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. 
It happens also through the laying on of hands. It also happens through the hearing of God's word. That's right. Hearing of God's word. So while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell. And that's why we've got to be listening to the word of God. You can't afford to be distracted. Brothers and sisters, when you listen to God's word, faith comes. And what God says will come to pass because now you have the exchange to lay hold on that which God says. He says, I can be healed. I heard it. Because many persons came in. Many persons have been in the sanctuary. I told about the lady, she came here, she heard, she heard a prayer that says, hey, so somebody in this room that's, that's barren that needs to get pregnant. That woman heard that word and it sprung faith in her soul. She said, that's mine. I need that. Went home, got pregnant. Sister Prince, three, three children now. Three children now. After many years of trying, but she got a word. And what she did, she believed the word. If you hear the word and can believe it, you shall receive. Because God's word is life. We say, Lazarus! And a dead man, four days dead, heard the voice of Jesus. And they of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter. Because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of them. Peter was shocked out of his wits. Carnelius was praying, praying like he always did, a devoted man, prayed always, gave gifts to the poor and helped them out. But he, while he's praying, an angel came and appeared unto him and said, send down to Joppa. And I want you to go find a man named Simon Peter. He's living in Simon the Tanner. So I'm telling you which one of the Simon he must go to. He's actually by the seaside. He's down by Joppa. But I don't want you Simon the Tanner. I want you Simon Peter. He's why you must go to. So when you go to you can't make a mistake. Send for that one and he will tell you words. Send for that one, he will tell you words. That's going to cause you to be saved. The man was praying, the man was giving arms, and the man still wasn't saved. The man had, had an angelic visitation and the man still was not saved. You can be having experience with God and be lost on your way to hell. But until Jesus comes into my heart and reign on the throne room of my soul, I'm in trouble. Because you can be healed and lost. You can be delivered and still be lost. But we need Jesus as Lord of all in my life. I don't just want the things of God. I want God Almighty. The, those who came with Peter were shocked out of their wits. <laughs> Jesus Christ had to do a number on Peter to get him out of the house. Because of his cultural state of mind. The Jews have no dealings with Gentiles. Those people, those people will defile you. And the Lord arrested him and gave him a sign. I said, go. And he went. And while he was speaking, while he was sharing the word of God, the Holy Ghost fell. And he heard them speak. And that's how he knew for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? Hold on, brothers and sisters. Hey, the man got the Holy Ghost, but guess what? He still needed to be baptized. That's right. So, so you can't just get Holy Ghost. You need to be baptized as well. And you can't just get baptized. You need to get the Holy Ghost. And God had to do it this way now because I'm telling you, Peter, who is a man who don't like Gentiles himself, but we saw it, that trait followed him even after ministry, still pursued him and him still behaved himself in that way. God had to pick up another man and send him into the, into the mission field. But even though that happened, God had to work on him and say, listen to me, man, I am no respecter of person. I love everybody. And they should have known this because God said in Genesis chapter 12, guess what? I'm going to use you to bless the nations of the world. So it's not about you alone. You're just the, the, the pilot or the, 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 the catalyst that's going to be used now to communicate it. Don't think of it for yourself only. No, I, I came to you and you accepted me. So I'm not going to use you to bless the nations of the world. And the families of the earth are going to be blessed through you. So you know from a long time before now that salvation is not only for you, it's for all. 
For God so loved that he gave. That's right. He loved the world, all of us. And he commanded and he baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to tarry certain days. This happened through the hearing of God's word also. And the initial evidence, as we've mentioned through a couple of the scriptures, when somebody receives the Holy Ghost, something happens. The supernatural happens. Simon the sorcerer saw it and said, sell it to me. And every instance of persons receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the scriptures, in the book of Acts in particular, we saw them speaking as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. And when it didn't say it explicitly, we knew it was so because of the characters were involved in the process and testified in other instances when they had the experience. And so in Acts chapter 2 and verse 4, and they were all, all, 120 of them, all of them, not the disciples only, all of them were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. They didn't start to blah, 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 blah. No, the Spirit of God spoke through them. We have some religions today who train people to talk in tongues. It does not work. This is by the Holy Ghost. It is Jesus on the inside flowing through. After he got in, then you start to talk. Remember, no, no, tongues is not Holy Ghost. No. Tongues is the initial evidence that Jesus is inside there. So he gets in, and when he gets in, we open our mouth. Sometimes they say hallelujah. When you hear, you hear something else coming out of your mouth. It is Jesus speaking. Mysteries. Acts 10, 46, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter. And then in Acts chapter 19, when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Is it essential to salvation? The Holy Ghost? Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, he is. Let's read and we'll close on this session. We'll close on this. Read for me John chapter 3. Verse 3 through 5. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter enter the kingdom water baptism in the name of jesus christ the infilling of the holy ghost is what brings us into the kingdom of god and enables us to enter therein god bless you tonight god bless you tonight receive ye the holy ghost hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you lord thank you Thank you, Jesus. Can we just pray together right now? Right now, everybody just pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, God, we look to you. We look to you. We look to you. We need you, Lord. We thank you for your words. Your words that reveals your plan for our salvation. It costs you everything. Your very life. And you paid the ultimate price so that none would perish, but that all would have eternal life. God, my Savior, there are those among us who are struggling. Oh God, many of us before we receive, we struggled also. We tried everything possible, Lord. Hallelujah. But I thank you that you didn't give up on us. And we know you're not giving up on anyone, Lord. It is your will. It is your will. It is your will. Remove the hindrance. Remove the struggle. Remove the blockade. Help somebody to pray through their fears. Help somebody to pray through their doubts. Help somebody to overcome their pride. Hallelujah. So they can become receptive to the gift of your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. While they tarry. While they seek after you. Oh God, help them to overcome the struggles of the flesh. The struggles of the mind. Hallelujah. To believe you and take you at your word. And surrender all. Where they lose self and find it in you. God, my Savior. 
Let these words abide in our hearts and help us to apply them to our lives and to live accordingly so that your name will be glorified in us. For the offering about to receive from the hearts of your children, we ask a blessing upon it even now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we give you thanks, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise Jesus. Praise God. God bless you tonight. God bless you tonight. God bless you tonight. While the offering is being lifted, if there are any questions or I know uh, persons who wanted to make their comments, Mr. Prince, um, we'll take those now as we get ready to close. Comments or questions, we'll take them. Mr. Prince. Praise God, praise God. God is, yes, go ahead, Sister Prince. Okay, greetings, everyone. I think it is Acts 16, verse 30 to 31, that asks the questions, what, they should be, what should we do to be saved? And it said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Uh, it's interesting to note, sir, that there are some um, yes. beliefs that leave it right there. Agreed. Yes, I had a conversation with some persons at my office. Right. And they, you know, drew their attention to this scripture. Right. To say this is all that you need right. to do to be right. saved. Right. But then I continued, just like you did, to say, but if you believe, you know, it belief follows action. That's correct. And so on. But they can't get it. They say, but the Lord said, just believe. Right. So I just wanted to point it out that that's not where it ends. Remind me the verse because we, it's, I it's, would. It's Acts 16, 30 to 31. Right. So I had planned to read the other verses with us tonight, but I realized time was slipping. So I didn't do that. But now they brought it back. In verse 31, yeah, verse 30. they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that's and thou right. shalt be saved right. and thy house. Is the instruction that Paul gave to the Philippian jailer. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his straightway. So we see that because they believe, they were baptized. That's what we're seeing. So when you say you believe, it's not just to say, that, okay, I heard what you said and I believe it and that's it. Believe is a verb, it's an action word. So I now need to demonstrate what it is that I believe by responding to it in obedience. So yes, if I believe, it says shall be saved. It didn't say that they were saved. It says shall be. Because he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not won't even get baptized. So the, 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 the verses that follows actually opens it up even more to show that there is a response after you, believe. after you say that you believe. Just like Carnelius. And yes. another thing, sir, um, you mentioned, and I think it was Philip, I don't think the scripture said, we're not talking about the evidence of the Holy Ghost, right? We had a conversation, and persons were saying, but not everybody spoke in tongues after they received the Holy Ghost. And I think, I think it was Philip. The scripture didn't say Philip spoke in tongues. But then you said tonight is based on the characters that are involved. Explain that, please. So Peter and John came to Samaria, laid hands on the Samaritans, and they got the Holy Ghost. And Simon the sorcerer says, sell me some of that. The question is, what did, si what did Simon saw? What did he see? He saw the, we're saying that we know the evidence that Simon saw was the speaking in tongues. We know that. And how do we know that? Because the same Peter who was at Samaria was the same Peter who was in Carnelius' house. And when Carnelius got the Holy Ghost, Peter said, they got the Holy Ghost as well as we. And we heard them speak. So if Peter was able to recognize Carnelius' household got the Holy Ghost, it would have been that he also recognized how the Samaritan got the Holy Ghost. And it had to be the same evidence for him to be able to say, 
we understand this. So though it's not explicitly stated that the Samaritans spoke in tongues, we know because Peter, we saw him in other places, persons receiving, and he underscored how he knew that they got the Holy Ghost was through the evidence of speaking in tongues. Just like we did in Acts chapter 2. So Philip was down there by himself. We didn't hear of anybody else there with him. But Peter and John came from Jerusalem and came because they heard that Samaria had received the word. And then Peter and John prayed for them, laid hands, and they started getting the Holy Ghost. See? Oh, yes, yes. So Philip, Philip, the fact that Philip was performing miracles was an indication that he had the Holy Ghost also. Because the Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe. So the signs were following Philip's ministry in Samaria. So we knew he had the Holy Ghost. All right. Yeah, by the same character, the same character who came. By the way, the Bible says in Acts chapter one and verse eight, the scripture verse that we use tonight, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost, you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, uttermost part. And the, the same outline in Acts chapter one and verse eight was the same outline that the Holy Ghost was poured out. You went to Jerusalem first, Peter in. Jerusalem preaching, they got the Holy Ghost, the evidence happened. After um, Jerusalem, he says to Judea, Carnelius' house, Samaria, Philip in Samaria, uttermost part of the earth. We saw Paul going out to the regions beyond and persons getting the Holy Ghost. And when he laid hands, they spoke in tongues. So the order was followed through. In each of those areas, the Holy Ghost was outpoured. And Peter was the one who was instrumental in that outpouring. All right. Yes. All right. The question in the chat, how long after you repent should you baptize? Immediately. Once you repent, the next step is water baptism. My, yes, my sister. Go ahead. God bless you. Mm -hmm. Bless the Lord. Praise God. Um, can you uh, give us a difference between the speaking of tongues on the day of Pentecost where it state that they spoke in languages that those who were around could understand because they spoke in their own language. From the one that is in 1 Corinthians 14 where Paul was saying that about the unknown tongues that it must be interpreted and he also said that I rather prophesy than speak in tongues. I saw this, the verses that you gave um, it says that they spoke in tongues and magnifying God, or it also said that, and they prophesied. So can you just spread some light on, on that, please? Thanks. No problem. All right, so you have tongues that, the Bible classified tongues as unknown tongues and known tongues. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh unto God and not unto man. So the person who is speaking in an unknown tongue inspired by the Holy Ghost, is having a conversation with God. The man who is speaking in a known tongue can be speaking and persons can be understanding. So on the day of Pentecost, we had 17 different nations gathered. As we know, they were Jews who came to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. So they came from regions because the Jews have been scattered from Jerusalem because of their sins for many years, and they started coming back in 1948 in our era. But they have, they've all not come back as yet but they still go back home every year and celebrate. So as they went home to celebrate, here comes the Holy Ghost taking place. So when those came from Russia, for example, and other eras, um, Arabia, Crete, Pamphylia, Phrygia, they came from these regions. The language that those Jews speak in those era is native to the where they're living, but they also knew Hebrew. So when they came home to Jerusalem, celebrating. They heard the 120 disciples speaking language that they spoke from their home. So those who came from Phrygia heard them speaking that language. Those who, who came from Pamphylia, from Crete, heard those language. So you had a combination of persons speaking in tongues, but those were known tongues inspired by the Holy Ghost. They were not delivering a message to the people. They were magnifying God. And then Peter got up with the 11 and said, men and brethren, this phenomenon that you're looking and wondering what it is, I'm not going to tell you what it is. This is that. And he preached to them. And after that message, people got saved. So it wasn't, it wasn't that they were preaching to them in tongues. 
they were just amazed of this phenomenon. What mean at this? What is this? These men must be drunken because this is strange, their behavior. And again, not only tongues, but even the manifestation of their operation is indicating that they look like them drunk. And so we need to understand what this is. Then Peter got up, I'm coming to my brother, and explained to them what this phenomenon. This is a prophecy that Joel prophesied, and it is being fulfilled today in your very eyes. So this is the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's not the gift of tongues that Paul makes reference to in Corinthians 14. All right, so this is the gift of the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, they receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Peter said, this is that which the prophet spoke of. I'm going to pour my spirit upon all flesh. That's what that was. When you talk about tongues and interpretation of tongues and gift of tongues, which is a gift of the spirit. For me to have the gift of tongues, I must first have the spirit. I must first have the Holy Ghost. So I need to receive the Holy Ghost to have the gifts of the spirit. And one of the gifts of the spirit is diverse kinds of tongues that will operate in the sense where there can be persons where you actually know speaking in a language of the person who is actually wherever they are and communicating a message to them in that language. So that can actually happen. But Paul is saying when you come in a gathering of a church where people are gathered together, then it is more edifying if, actually, if you actually prophesy. Or if you're going to speak in tongues, then do it by the course of two or three individual, rather than everybody speaking and nobody understands what's taking place. And that is if a message is coming, which is different from gathering and worshiping and going off in tongues and worshiping the Lord. Just like these in the book of Acts, they were worshiping, they spoke in tongues, and nobody said, we need to interpret this. No, they were magnifying the Lord in an unknown tongue, and they recognized that this is the Holy Ghost. And nobody said, we need an interpreter. You don't need an interpreter because they're magnifying God. There's a difference when somebody is magnifying the Lord under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues than when the Lord desires to speak to somebody through the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues. My brother. Uh, good night. Bless you. Uh, the question that I want to ask, I think you have just answered it, but I think I'm not very clear. Okay, sure. Go ahead. Um, let me first say that I believe in the apostleship way of doctrine. Yes. Um, the infilling of the Holy Ghost and all of that. Um, however, I do have concern as it relates to the infilling of the Holy Ghost and that speaking of tongues is the evidence. Right. Is the initial evidence. Is the initial evidence. Right. right. I do have some concern there. Right. Um, I see where you have tried to explain it a while ago, but I'm still not clear. The reason why I have concerns is I sometimes find it when I visit church, and even when persons are ministering, and there's a lot of tongues being spoken, it sometimes it discourages me because I'm confused. I'm saying that everybody's here speaking. What are you saying? It's like I'm ignorant to what you are doing, right? Um, then now, another thing that actually confused me is that I am. Um, I observed a lot of persons who are so gifted in speaking of tongues and then their manifestation outside of church is not in sync with the Bible. So I'm saying that, okay, it seems that a person can pretend tongues and if persons can pretend tongues, how is that evidence? That's question one. Question two, if Tongues, which is the one that does not have to have an interpretation, is the actual evidence. How is me, an unlearned person, for example, is, will be able to can testify just like the persons them that didn't believe on the day of Pentecost because they heard they magnify God, they heard they understand what they were saying, so they realized that, yes, these people were actually magnifying God, but they were speaking into a language what these people were not aware of. So there was that conviction because there was something strange happening there. No, I'm hearing somebody speaking in tongues. I'm not understanding what you're saying. You're cursing God, you're praising God, I don't know. Right. But you are here speaking in tongues because you're in the house of God and I'm assuming that you're praising God. But it doesn't bring any clarification to me in the house of God. So 
I have that concern when it comes on to the house of God, the gathering of the saints and persons who are unlearned like myself being in the house the amount of tongues that is spoken, right, are tongues being accepted and initial evidence is somewhat questionable to me. All right, no so, problem. So number one, in answering your question, in the first thing is that every time we see in scripture somebody receiving the Holy Spirit, they actually speak in tongues. The layout of the book of Acts as instructed by the Lord in Jerusalem in Samaria, into the uttermost parts of the earth, we saw that every time persons receive, they always spoke in tongues. That's number one. Number two, um, you say people pretend tongues. Now, because somebody pretend tongues, is that saying that person don't have the real tongue? Can't be. So people will pretend for sure, but it doesn't mean, it doesn't, it doesn't say the person who got the Holy Ghost and spoke is not real, because persons will receive and will speak as the Spirit of God give the utterance. Number three, in 1 Corinthians 14, as Paul addresses tongues in particular, he brings it in alignment because of the nature of this particular gift. It must be regulated because it could cause confusion. But nevertheless, can I tell you that Paul says that tongues are for unbelievers. <laughs> it's a sign to unbeliever. And, we have, and, and like Paul, I've had the experience, we have had the experience here where somebody comes in I hear somebody speaking in tongues and came under conviction, though they knew not what the person was saying, but they were convicted that that was God speaking to them. And they came under conviction and actually got saved. So the point is that the Bible says tongues are for the unbelievers as a sign to them. So the sign, so if, if you don't have this sign, what the unbeliever going to see? They won't know. So we must be willing to express ourselves in worship so that this sign can be sent as a signal. And persons can see it. Right. Just like how Simon saw something and wanted it. So certain persons will actually see. So while you say you're confused by it, there's somebody else who actually sees it and says, Oh my God, God has just spoken to my heart. So that's one. Number two, the next point, coming to Celia. So while the children of Israel is in, in Jerusalem on that day, follow me, my brother, and 17 different nations. So my sister here is from Phrygia. My sister here is from Crete. My sister from Pamphylia. No. Me and Brother Farkinson. Brother, Brother Farkinson speaking um, Cretan. Now, while he's speaking Cretan, you know, the sister from Crete can understand what Brother Farkinson, who lives in Jerusalem, is speaking, even though he's also speaking, he knows how to speak Hebrew. Now, guess what? The sister from Pamphylia don't know what he's saying. So, though this one here, what he says, to her, it is confusing, but somebody's benefiting. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. No, 17 different nations gathered and 120 people were speaking 17 different languages. And persons who knew the language heard it. And those who didn't know it, they listened to the one, they, see, they recognized that God has been magnified in my language over here. And what mean at this? And so all the nations who gathered, we put them together and tell everybody to be quiet and preach the message to them. I don't know if that makes it any clearer. Sister Lydia, wanted, I come to you, Sister Shirley. Sister Lydia wanted to make a point concerning this. Oh, I just wanted to, to say this, just to remind him that the scripture did say, these signs shall follow them that believe, they shall speak, speak with, with tongues. New tongues. And um, the scripture that speaks about tongues for the un, is for the unbeliever, right. is 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 22, so you can look at it. And tongues are, the, the speaking in tongues is like your prayer language, really. The Bible says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh unto God. When the Bible talks about the Holy Ghost making intercession, and when the, when the writers, Peter, Jude, say, pray in the Spirit, he's saying, pray and allow the Spirit of God to pray through you, and oftentimes pray in tongues. Paul says, I am glad that I speak in tongues more than all of you. But, but, <laughs> for the church setting, I need to regulate this thing so persons can the odd right so i but um another point that you made my brother hold on follow me i wanted to share share share, share. i don't feel free to share we're just sharing um so persons are speaking in tongues but their life don't match up and guess what that's exactly what was taking place in the corinthian church the paul says you are carnal and i can't talk to uno as spiritual imagine you have a, a brother over there so asleep with him father wife and only things I'm not a Christian, I'm not speaking tongues. That happened in the church then. 
and it will happen to it was a gift the bible says they came behind in no gift they were they were upper hold on jesus said not everybody said lord lord shall enter now they can cast out devil they can prophesy and that is being done through the power of the holy ghost and guess what jesus said depart from me i don't know you so you can be gifted and still have been in hell but you can't be spiritual and operate through the fruit of the spirit and end up in hell that's a guarantee but you can be gifted but doesn't mean that because you have the gift you are automatically living right you still have the discipline to come into alignment with god and live a holy life so the man can be gifted and decide to thwart the thing and do what he wants and god's going to deal with him at the end but it doesn't mean that i must not operate because he is abusing my, abusing the gift if i have the gift and you decide to abuse the gift, i'm going to manifest the gift in the right order and bring god glory and not because you don't you're not doing it right me just shut down no yes this is surely you're going to say um talk to that point or is another point you had because I wanted to hear his point still. Um, go ahead, my brother. Yes. Right. Right. Exactly. right yes right 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 Yes. Yes. Right. 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 Yes. Question. Do you speak in tongues? Oh, you have not? Okay. Okay. Right. Got you. Okay. Right. Understand understand right I got you I got you I got you I got you understand 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 and um uh, what can i tell you um come and see <laughs> come and see <laughs> because um many of us here have had the experience um through other ministries that we're a part of like home bible study where we go and we're sitting in people's homes and doing bible study and without us speaking the person get the holy ghost and start to speak in tongues or the demon manifests and we cast the demon out of the individual all these other signs actually happens so, so so i'm sorry that you had that and i know that is happening today but you've got to also understand that um there is an attack on the body of christ to bring confusion to people so that they do not embrace the truth that is a strategy of the enemy because as you rightly said in earlier days not a lot of persons clap not a person not a lot of persons speaking tongues. but today and that's why i mentioned in the teaching there are persons who are training people to speak in tongues and there's a difference between when somebody is trained to speak in tongues and somebody is functioned by the Holy Ghost. There's a noticeable difference. It's not the sound of it, you know. It's the spirit that is behind what is being said. Right? They're pretending. 
So um, one of the things, though, I'm going to ask of you, though, is to believe the scriptures. Start right there. Lord, you said, and based on what I'm seeing, this person got the Holy Ghost. And when they got the Holy Ghost, this happened to them. And I can, I can understand with you, number brother, because guess what? When I was seeking the Holy Ghost, this tongues thing, I tell my mother, I said, listen to me, it cannot happen. If you want to learn a language, you must go to school to learn a language. You can't speak in tongues and nobody not train you. I told my man of that, but I got to a place and I said, God, I want you more than anything else, anything you want to do. If you're real, show me. And I got to that place. I surrendered everything. I said, God. And when he did it, and I hear the word come to my mouth, I said, well, what's going on inside here? <laughs> I tried to hold myself. I said, no, no, no. I'm supposed to be in control of myself. Why is this happening? And then I realized that God had filled me with the Holy Ghost. My entire life changed. I walk into a service and people are worshiping and suddenly out of my mouth come praises in another language. Think of a baby that comes to the nursery. And when you carry the baby to a six weeks clinic and one baby already said, ah! and, they, ah! and the whole clinic starts to ball. Do they understand? No, but they're freely expressing because we have got life. And when you have spiritual life, there's an unction from your spirit that gives God glory. That's kind of hard to hold back because I've got life. And when you have life, sound. Sound is connected to life. Always. Always. You don't have, when you have silence, you have death. When you have sound that tells you. When you're in the stillness of the night, you're hearing there's somebody outside. You know there's somebody alive out there. It was noise abroad. And every time God is about to do something in the earth, a sound accompanies it. Because sound is significant to life. So, so I understand the cry. And um, I'm saying, just take the God's word for what it says first. Forget about everything else. I, quest I, started, I started in church. I said, hold on there. Come to this, Shirley. Somebody spoke in tongues at the front. I'm a young man now. And I see what's going on. Somebody spoke in tongues at the front bench. And somebody ran at the back. And I said, this is what's going on in this place. Look at them plan something, man. Oh, this one, they're down in the corner. And then I've sudden, it's when I got the Holy Ghost. Watch this. I'm on the altar. And the Holy Ghost came into my being. And I'm, I'm, I, start to feel, I start to use my mind. I say, I start to say, God, how did you get inside here? Did you come through my foot bottom? I made mean, it come through my side. And I heard a lady started to scream. And she was screaming. When she was screaming, the sound that came out of her connected to my spirit. And I knew that she was coming to me because there's a sound that connected her spirit to mine. I first time I get told it first day I kneel down and God walk into my being. I'm hearing a sound like I could come from the back of the church. And I, and I was down there saying, Lord, how you come inside here? How you get in here? And while I'm there reasoning with God, I only feel two arms hug me up and say, Brother, the Holy Ghost inside of you. The same lady was making the sound, you know, connected and bore witness. That I've got the Holy Ghost. And I say, yeah, me know. I say, me get the Holy Ghost. Me try. I wonder how I'm getting inside here. So I, I'm just saying to my brother, follow the scriptures. Check to see if what we have said is so. And read it for yourself. So I can tell this much. You're trying to use your natural mind to understand a spiritual issue. And the Bible says the spiritual, the, the natural mind cannot perceive the things of God because they are spiritually discerned. And that's why I got to a place of God, if you're real in at all and this thing real, see me here. I gave up on myself and my own understanding because my own understanding blocked me from getting the Holy Ghost for many years. I stood in my own way trying to use my natural understanding to understand the things of God. And when God did a number on me, it is after that that I understood some of the things I did not understand. When you dive into the pool, that's what you're going to learn. You're going to realize, oh, so this is what swimming about. When you don't look at it before, you saw it, but you still didn't know it. When you dive in there, you're going to say, oh, this is what swimming. Oh, so that, oh, oh I get it. Follow the scriptures. Sister Shirley. In Acts chapter 1, verse 5, yes. it says, For John truly baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Right. So even that gentleman, if he believes right now, repent, believe, 
he can receive the Holy Ghost right now. Right now. Anybody that is in this house and they need the Holy Ghost, they can get it right now. You don't have to take 20, 30, 40 years. You can get it right now if you believe. Amen. That's my point. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. God bless you. We're going home. We're going home. We're going home. In Jesus' name. Sister Prince, you're saying something. Come. Come and pray. <laughs> your voice not working so well. All right. Come, missionary Palmer. We pray for your voice too. <laughs> Hyacinth Martin is in need of salvation along with Elton Da Costa and Monique Johnson. Then for healing, Brother Malachi admitted in the hospital and Sister Kay. All right, so let's hold these names as Missionary Palmer comes to pray and to close for us in prayer in Jesus' name. Let's just take note of the name and as she prays, let's pray for these individuals and expect God to perform a miracle. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. We magnify you, Lord God. You are King of kings. You are Lord of lords. The Alpha. The Omega. Lord Jesus. The great, the great I am. Hallelujah. God, we recognize your presence even now, Jesus. God Almighty, hallelujah. 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 We feel your presence, God. As it's over, Lord Jesus, in this tabernacle right now, glory be to Jesus. And we give unto you the glory. Hallelujah. We give unto you the praise, Lord Jesus. Hayashaya Komasima. Ribushiendo Sataraboshaya. God Almighty. Aya. As we spoke about it, God, you are indeed a witness hallelujah to those who do not believe god almighty as you pour out your spirit lord jesus oh god upon all flesh we pray that we will be we will receive you lord god lord god we will entertain you jesus this is what we are praying for god that your spirit will tabernacle with us, Lord Jesus. Oh God, and as soon as we make the sacrifice, oh God, for the past two weeks, coming into the last portion of the, the, the fast, God, holy Jesus, we pray, God, that our effort was not in vain. It was not just a hunger fast, oh God, but we made the concerted effort to seek your face. Hallelujah. And so, God Almighty Jesus, as we come before you, God, root out everything, O oh God, that should not be in us, O oh God. I pray, God Almighty, that we will be willing to surrender. Oh, God, and not be like Achan, oh, God. Who will, God Almighty, keep some of the Babylonian garments in our possessions? But we will be free, God Almighty, to say, I surrender. Hallelujah, Jesus. Some of the things that we want to surrender, God, have been with us for years, oh, God. But you promised to tear down every principality, every power, everything that exalts itself above you. And so, God, we empty ourselves before you, Jesus. Because, God Almighty, we really want, oh God, an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, we are reminded in Ezekiel 
Oh God, when you took the prophet down to the valley and you asked the question, can these dry bones live? Hallelujah. There are so many times, God Almighty, when we come into the sanctuary. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we just, oh God, pretend as if God Almighty Jesus, there is indeed a shaking from you because we know exactly how to do it like Samson. But oh God, we repent of even those falsehood, oh God, my Savior. Hallelujah. And we really need to be shaken by the Holy Ghost. We need, oh God Almighty, bones coming to bones, sinews to sinews. Holy Ghost, we need a great shout in the camp again, Jesus. Hallelujah, God Almighty. And so we pray tonight, Jesus. Oh God, if we have not yet found that solitude in you, help us, oh God Almighty, to make that effort, oh God to find that place in you, God, where you will appear, Lord Jesus, where you will transform us, God, where you will make us whole again. Hallelujah. Those who have not yet received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, God, we are praying, Jesus. We are praying for them. Oh, God Almighty, as we call their names, hallelujah, before you, Jesus. We are praying for that mighty breakthrough. And so, God, even among us sometimes, God Almighty, there's evidence. Oh, God, that some have not yet received, but they are comfortable. God, I pray, Jesus, that there will be an uncomfortable move in the name of Jesus. As the apostle says, we heard them speak as we speak, as we are unctioned by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And so we pray tonight, every false pretense, oh God Almighty Jesus, will be rooted out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. 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 Abba Shandai, Asata Moshama, Derukorabase, Derabo Shandai, Mande Oshama, Baishe Sekoba. Glory to God. I pray that when the utterance of the Holy Ghost is given, God, it won't be any imitation in the sanctuary. But we will speak as the Spirit of God give the utterance in the mighty name of Jesus. Aya, Pentecost can be repeated. For you are just the same God Almighty. And so we pray for a mighty surge of the Spirit. In this tabernacle we pray in your name as we commit ourselves to you. As we go right now, God, some God will be traveling on foot, some unfilled one. Why they go, God, while they even walk, God, oh, Shama, they can receive the Holy Ghost. While they drive, God, they can receive the Holy Ghost. They don't have to wait until they come into the sanctuary. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh God Almighty, we are praying for a mighty move in the name of Jesus. God, you will not dwell among us and the falsehood, God. You will not stay with us, God. We will have to be true. In the name of Jesus, have your way. Have your way. Let no count of feet, O oh God Almighty, stay among us, Lord Jesus. Ayah, no counterfeit, God. 
we rebuke the spirit, O oh God of counterfeit, in the name of Jesus. What we want is the raw surge of your power, God. We want, O oh God, the dynamic sound of the Holy Ghost. For God, Pentecost, do have a sound in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's what we want in this place. We don't want to hear the voice of nothing else but of that of the Holy Ghost. Have your way tonight, we pray, as we say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Arusha Rubes. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we glorify your name. We glorify your name. We glorify your name. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 We continue under this theme, receive you the Holy Ghost for this week. Remember, we're doing five links, three day links and two evening links. We're praying six in the morning, 12 at noon and six in the afternoon. Let's do these links as we press into God. We want to see the manifestation of Jesus Christ. I, I, I am just, you know, I, I, I note my brothers cry because I was there, I was there, I was there. And I've seen Pentecost where people look through the window and while they didn't understand, they got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we thank you for what you're about to do. The outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah, 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 we're getting ready to go, just worship the Lord somebody, God is doing an operation, God is working on somebody right now, let's set the atmosphere, that God is free to operate. He operates in a space of worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You are worthy. You're wonderful. You're gracious. You're kind. And we love you, Lord. Operate, Holy Ghost. And let your kingdom come. And let your will be done. In the name of Jesus, my God. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. Undo every heavy burden. Hasha. Let the oppressed go free. Abba. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be thou exalted. Be thou lifted on high. We exalt you, King Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is that, my God. Jesus. Somebody asked, what is this on the day of Pentecost? When they saw, they couldn't understand what was taking place. The man of God under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. This is that which the prophet spoke of. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh god is still pouring out and we're praying we're praying we're praying we're praying for the manifestation of the holy ghost in the Yoshama, in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus god we thank you we thank you we thank you we give you the praise we give you the glory 
Tomorrow morning, God's willing, spread our lives. We have fasting and prayer service right here in the sanctuary at 10 a.m. And then on Thursday night, we'll be praying right here in the sanctuary. Remember, this Friday night, all night prayer meeting, come ready. Hope you've been looking at the tabernacle pattern because we're going to pray the tabernacle on Friday night. So come on out as we pray through the night and seek the face of Jesus. All outstanding church made premiums, we're asking you to submit saying to Sister Zara. And please make note that our, we have combined Sunday school this Sunday morning, God's willing. So we can be here in the sanctuary together as we break bread and learn the word of Almighty God. For the children, they remain online. So we will have it in that order. All main services are uploaded to our YouTube page. That's Bethel United Church, Apostolic Portmore. Please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. God bless you. God bless you. Let's raise our hands for the benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, hallelujah, and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever, that all God's people say, amen. God bless you. Greet somebody. Love somebody. Get home safely. In Jesus.